All right, guys, PW here once again, and today we got the AudioQuest Boxer subwoofer cable. And they call it a low frequency audio interconnect. Um, now, this is join me in my search for the perfect subwoofer cable, so to speak. Um, a subwoofer cable should offer a few things uh, high performance, yeah, it should still look good, so aesthetic qualities, you know, appearance wise, it should look nice. Uh, but, you know, a lot of people aren't necessarily having their subwoofer cable out in view, so it doesn't have to look nice. Most of all, it just has to perform well. Uh, but in terms of performance, a subwoofer cable should do a few things. One, it should definitely transfer the low frequency signal uh, down to, like, you know, 5 hertz, let's say. Uh, so in case you get a subwoofer that's capable of doing that at any point in life, which you probably won't, uh, you'll, at least you'll be able to handle it. Uh, it should do something else, too. The subwoofer cable um, should definitely not pick up interference. And by interference, what I mean is um, about eight years ago, before I ever got married, I remember first meeting my wife and moving into her uh, so-called upper-end east side apartment type deal on the river and uh well unfortunately it was a very nice apartment but it was close to a radio station and uh, i didn't know this at the time and i plugged my good old equipment in a subwoofer i believe i had like a crappy klh subwoofer at the time right it wasn't the sub though the cable i was using a cheap subwoofer cable right but i believe an acoustic research cable i can show you it over there i still got it but it's actually one of the most common uh used subwoofer cables for the past like five years uh, it's available at all the big box stores, or at least was years ago. And it's a blue long cable with like rubber type insulation. Looks a little something like this. Acoustic research. Um, and this almost looks like a digital interconnect, like a coaxial digital cable. Digital coax cable. Which, believe it or not, sometimes you can use the same cables to do so. Uh, but the problem with the subwoofer cables are they need to be long. But anyway, plug this guy in back in the day. And uh, what do I know? I'm hearing not 60 hertz hum, not hiss, not buzzing. I'm hearing a radio station play through my subwoofer. And it was extremely annoying. I couldn't stand it, so it set me on the path to look for the perfect subwoofer cable. While subwoofer cables can get expensive, I ended up choosing this cable right here from AudioQuest. And it's currently powering my Velodyne subwoofer right now, but yeah, it's called the sub one cable from audio quest now it was the first subwoofer cable i had ever had or acquired that had a grounding cable on it uh, extremely useful but in situations where i was living near a radio station and there was radio frequency interference it stopped the problem no more radio station playing through the subwoofer so everything worked out just fine i found my perfect subwoofer cable and life can go on as it normally did now, I can tell you one thing. I don't even need to ground this guy up to get any interference, but fortunately, I don't live, live near a radio station at this time. While the, the AudioQuest Sub 1 subwoofer cable was working out perfectly, it is unfortunately no longer available. When you look at AudioQuest's current lineup, you're going to see a little bit of something that looks like this. It's going to start with the Black Lab. That's your cheapest entry-level AudioQuest subwoofer interconnector cable, right? They all got grounding on them, so they're all pretty nice. I've had a chance to uh, see and hear all of these. Next up the line, a little bit more expensive, is the Irish Red. Uh, so let me start by saying the Irish Red is the first one that actually has solid 0.5, I know that's not a lot, but 0.5% silver-plated copper conductors in it. The Black Lab has solid, long-grain copper conductors with a foamed polyethylene insulation. Now, the boxer cable, which brings us to this one, is one line down from the Husky, the Husky being their most expensive offered. It's got that 72 volt electric bias system or whatever, di dielectric bias system or something, and uh, solid 5% silver plated copper conductors, polyethylene air tube insulation. Now, while that's a nice cable, that's got an XLR balance connection on it. Now, we don't need anything like that. That's a little bit too expensive. I ended up landing on the Boxer cable. Solid 1.25% silver-plated copper conductors, polyethylene air tube insulation. It has proven to be one of the most effective subwoofer cables I've ever owned, beyond my sub-1 cable over there powering the, powering the Velodyne. 
Now, to give you a little uh, synopsis on this, the boxer breed originated in Germany in the late 19th century and was brought to the U.S. after World War I. Today, boxers are a part of the AKC's world or working dog group. Don't be fooled by that worried look on the boxer's face, though. Boxers are known for their fun-loving, genial, and at times downright clown-like demeanor, as well as their remarkable rapport with children. However, boxers are equally known for courage in the face of danger or threat to family or loved ones. The boxer's innate intelligence combined with its natural strength of stature make it a breed beloved by many. So we've gone through the lines of cables that AudioQuest offers for their subwoofer cables. Black Lab, Irish Red, Boxer, and Husky. Uh, believe it or not, I know for a fact that this is actually one of the AudioQuest uh, workers or employees' dog. Um, that kind of roams around the uh, headquarters at times. But yeah, this is actually a real dog that an owner of an employee of AudioQuest has and did this image off of. So he's a real dog. Um, but the perfect subwoofer cable, I'd have to say. Now, the price point varies for everyone, depending on availability, um, how new this was. This, this cable came out about two years ago. Uh, they just upgraded the line from their sub one and, you know, class cables. But this has proved to be a pretty effective cable. Um, as we talked about before, solid 1.25% silver conductors, PE air tube insulation. I think that's the part, guys, that's really helping with the uh, interference problems. And then double balanced geometry. Uh, so you do have a grounding end on each end of the cable. You're able to ground it either to your receiver or amplifier and the other end to your subwoofer. Uh, that's the one thing that really helps out in not picking up interference. But another problem can also be hiss or hum or 60-year hum. Um, that can be a, you know an issue of distortion that is hard to fix. It's either a problem caused by the amplifier or another issue that uh, you know happens to deal with your AC power. And, uh, well, sometimes picking up an AC line conditioner or power surge protector type deal can fix that. It's not always going to do the trick. Uh, a lot of times that 60 hertz hum is caused by preamp feedback. I know particularly from my setup, if I plug in my Parasound preamp and have it also on the same outlet, even with that surge protector, as another integrated amplifier with a preamp inside it, another power amplifier, and another receiver with a preamp inside of it, mind you, we're going to pick up distortion or feedback from that preamp. So a lot of preamps in one setup or on one outlet type deal, uh, or particularly one panel, you know, one... Um, breaker switch is going to cause that too. So check your setup if you got multiple things plugged into it before that, but I'd have to land on the boxer cable as being my perfect number one choice for a subwoofer cable. Now let me just quickly explain before I uh, conclude this video. It is a 3 meter 10 foot cable, so it's uh, probably the perfect length for my setup. However, it's not going to work in everybody's setup. They do offer different sizes, probably down from 1 meter up to 10 probably. Uh, I'd have to check on that, but it's proven to be a pretty effective subwoofer cable in all aspects. So, yeah, it looks like they offer up to a 20 meter, as you can see here, down to a 0.6. So, a little conversion chart there, but it's proven to be a pretty effective subwoofer cable. Now, let's have a look at the actual cable. While, mind you, my SVS subwoofer normally lies itself in its final resting point under that table, I've got it out here because I was doing some testing. The one thing I was testing or comparing things to was a, an audio, I'm sorry, an Amazon Basics subwoofer cable. Very, very, very cheap. One of the cheapest ones I've ever seen. I think I picked it up for under two bucks, right? As an add-on item on Amazon. Uh, comparing that particular subwoofer cable, mind you, and the Acoustic Research one we just looked at, this one, also the sub one cable from AudioQuest, but particularly the Boxer, outdid them in several different ways. The Acoustic Research one, had interference again. Not a radio station necessarily playing here, but buzz or hiss or hum. Just a little bit of distortion in that uh, woofer. If you put your hand up to the woofer, you could actually feel some vibrations going on in the uh, voice coil a little bit. But this subwoofer cable, and here it is, up close and personal, the Boxer, has proven to be the best one I've ever had. Why? Well, it's a little bit expensive. It's not cheap. I'm not going to lie to you. It was under 200 bucks, though. Um, and I think it's the type of deal where it's peace of mind. You buy this subwoofer cable, you plug it in, and you're going to know for years to come that you don't need to buy another cable. It looks nice. In fact, I even bought it because I was using all AudioQuest chocolate HDMI cables at the time, and there were these brown colors. So I thought everything would look nice and pleasing with the brown color. It's also grounded. A very long grounding cord, by the way, too. 
Uh, but I've never even needed to utilize the grounding here. Now, it is best when you buy a subwoofer cable that has this to actually do it, and I'm going to do that in my finalized setup. But this has proven to be one of the best subwoofer cables I've ever used in life. Um, and particularly by its you know, sonic signatures. Now, each subwoofer cable is going to pass a signal through a low-frequency effect, but it's how that sound exactly hits your ears and how it exactly, well, in bass terms, feels. Now, this cable, compared to the Amazon Basics, or let's say the Acoustic Research one in the case here, compared in a few different ways. Um, I had the girlfriend stand in the room with me and we did a comparison on this SVS subwoofer, which by the way is less than a year old and has been broken into perfect, or been breaking in perfectly. Uh, very subtle, low frequencies, you know, not a lot of volume and whatnot. And after testing and after her sitting here somewhat blindfolded, not literally, uh, I cycled through the cables, one being the Amazon Basics subwoofer cable, very long, uh, I believe it was uh, 25 feet, if I'm not mistaken, so very long. So that's stretching it out. The longer you run a subwoofer cable, the more possibilities it's going to act as an antenna or pick up radio frequency interferences. Uh, so a 25-foot Amazon Basics, a 20-foot Acoustic Research one, like we just saw there, and the Boxer subwoofer cable from Audio Quest. Now, some of the things that she noticed was... With the Amazon and the Acoustic Research one, yes, constantly heard some type of buzzing or hissing sound or humming. Um, you know, not sure what it was coming from. It wasn't preamp feedback. It didn't have any of this stuff plugged in as it isn't now. None of it plugged in, just the Marantz and my power amplifier from Emotiva turned on, and she still heard humming or buzzing. Just slightly, ever so slightly. The subwoofer would actually turn itself on with no signal being sent to it because it still had problems. Um... You know, moving up to the Acoustic Research one, though, we did notice a little bit more responsive bass in the Amazon Basics one, uh, but, you know, so little of a minute difference that you couldn't tell. The trained ear couldn't even really tell this. But then we moved into the boxer cable from AudioQuest, and I think she had to say that that one did sound the best. Why? Well, it is a shorter run, so keep that in mind. It is a shorter cable. The, the true test, if we were to do one, would include every cable the exact length in the exact same room, sounding signatures, and everything. Same subwoofer, of course, same audio track, everything the same. Uh, but we weren't able to do that. But I have to give you my true, honest um, recommendation or suggestion here, or at least feedback, so to speak, right? And my feedback is, well, the, sub, the Boxer subwoofer cable from AudioQuest proved to be the most effective. Now, we noticed tight, quick, responsive bass. Uh, and not only the SVS subwoofer, but also the Velodyne over there. We noticed really good bass off of both of them. Uh, very responsive, very low, down, as deep as the subwoofers could possibly go. If I'm not mistaken, like 40 or 50 hertz on the SVS and I believe 25 hertz on the Velodyne. Uh, keep in mind, in this case, the Velodyne is a 12-inch, and the SVS is only a 10. Uh, we'll upgrade to a 12-inch someday, I'd hope, to PB13 or PB16 Ultra. So, someday, hopefully, guys. But, for the time being, using two ported subwoofers, one non-ported, by the way, from Velodyne as well, a little 10-inch one. Also got a little 8-inch guy, too, by the way, that we didn't try, but... I feel the subwoofer doesn't really matter that much. Subwoofer is going to give you how that subwoofer is going to sound. It's how the actual signal is transmitted. Uh, how good of a job it is, you know, is it doing? And I have to say, the AudioQuest boxer cable gave us the best performance. Now let's just take a look at back here how it's kind of connected. I'm going to turn you guys around. We're going to take a look at the subwoofer cables plugged in. I've chosen to utilize both AudioQuest, the sub one and the boxer cable, both directional, as I said before. Uh, both grounding capabilities, and they're actually both grounded up on my ground spot right there, as you can see. No problems whatsoever. No issues. Now, I'm going to do a little bass test here in a minute. You can check out my other video, but in my next video right now, I'm going to compare, actually, this cable plugged into the Acoustic Research one, and maybe, possibly, will you notice a little bit of a difference. There you have it, guys. There is the Boxer subwoofer cable from AudioQuest, number one in my book and one of the best subwoofer cables I've ever chosen. Now, just to sum things up or conclude things a little bit,
Black Lab and Irish Shred are great audio cables. Don't get me wrong. They're great subwoofer cables. However, they just didn't prove to be as unique as the Boxer. The Boxer just gave me a little bit more peace of mind in terms of I'm getting the best possible signal transfer of that um, low frequency effector base, right? Now, just some quick words about it. It's got the 1.25% silver plated copper for conductors, a superbly cost effective way to maximize a video or digital cable. Harsh and horrible for full range audio, but like turning up the sharpness for a subwoofer, enhancing articulation and intelligibility. Solid core conductors eliminate strand interaction. This is the single biggest source of distortion in cables. Uh huh, probably what those other cables were uh, guilty of. Magnetic fields surrounding each strand interact with the fields of adjacent strands, modulating distorting the signal. Uh -huh. But double balanced geometry, electrically separated shield, better preserves integrity of the negative conductor. Polyethylene air tube insulation minimizes smearing and preserves dynamic contrast. Carbon-based three-layer noise dissipation system is their NDS coined by AudioQuest. Reduces noise contamination of the critical reference ground plane. And number six, cold welded hanging silver directly over pure red copper RCA plugs. And here you have it from AudioQuest themselves. If you hear a constant hum in your system after connecting your subwoofer, off, attach the chassis ground wires to either the equipment ground connection on the back panel or to any screw on the equipment chassis of both source and subwoofer. Do not use Boxer as a full range cable. It will sound harsh and irritating. As I did say before, sometimes people can take specifically a digital coax cable and use that as a subwoofer cable, but I never recommend doing it. They will work sometimes, and they look very similar, too, so oftentimes they can be uh, mistaken for each other. There you have it, guys. Here's a little image of each one of those things I was talking about. So number one, the 1.25% silver is kind of listed right there, if you can see that ever so slightly. Uh, number two being the solid core conductors eliminating the strand interaction right there. Number three being the double braided geometry electrically, electrically separating the shield better preserves integrity of the negative conductor right there. Number four polyethylene air tube insulation right there. Number five the carbon based two layer noise dissipation system. And then number six on the right here we've got the gold, cold welded hanging silver directly over pure red copper RCA plugs. Very nice, guys. And I have to say, i got to be honest, I've had this guy for just about a year now exactly, uh, to the date. And I don't feel that doing a review on anything, even an amplifier or a speaker, uh, with under a year's time is really the best way to grasp, so to speak, its capabilities. So, having had this AudioQuest boxer cable for a year now exactly, and using him probably on a regular basis, uh, it's proven to be pretty nice. Now, I have had some cables in the past where, over time, moving, whatnot, disconnecting them, connecting them back in, different system, winding them back up into a spool, you know, and then unwinding them, plugging them in again. And they can start to fray, come apart, edges break, maybe the insulation crack a little bit on it, or it just tear down overall, right? It uh, either... I don't know, moisture get to it, or it just degrades over time, right? This has not happened with this cable whatsoever. I'm a little late on doing this video because this is not exactly a new product. However, in the line of AudioQuest subwoofer cables, he's really new to the family in terms of the sub-1 cable, or compared to him, really. All right, there you have it. There's my video on the AudioQuest box cable. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, check back uh, next. I'm going to have a video of actually a test comparison. I'm going to swap between the acoustic research. Uh, I'm not going to run through the Amazon Basics cable because I've already done my review on that. It's a great cable for a low cost. However, it just doesn't have that grounding capability or that sonic signature that these AudioQuest cables seem to have. So... In terms of subwoofer cable, guys, Boxer is number one. Um, like I said, I have had a chance to hear the Black Lab and the Irish Red, and they're okay. However, I'd have to pick the Irish Red over the Black Lab because it was a little bit better constructed. Uh, it's got a different jacketing system on it instead of more of like a rubber type deal. Uh, than this guy. So this guy did seem to insulate things a little bit better, but you're really getting into a different ball game when you go with the Boxer. I, I, I gotta tell you. There you have it, guys. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you are, haven't already. Um, I apologize about not pumping out the videos as, as much as I would have liked to before Halloween here. I promised a few things that I didn't really adhere to. Uh, but I got a lot of stuff, a lot of fun stuff coming. I got some great, amazing news to announce to my viewers in the next couple of months. 
uh, especially by Christmas time, I'll let you know. Uh, but particularly at the one year mark, I'm doing like a sum up video or summarizing uh, everything I've ever done on YouTube, why I've done it. I've done it for you guys, the viewers. And um, I'd like to really give some interesting videos and let out the good news to you guys. There's some amazing things happening. There's some new products coming, some great stuff, uh, new reviews, testing stuff, got old stuff to test too. But uh, got a lot of fun stuff coming, guys. Thank you so much. Please subscribe, give a thumbs up.